What's up guys, in this video I'm going to unbox the Sandpart DDS-120 oscilloscope. Uh, I've been really wanting an oscilloscope and I went on eBay and I was looking at analog ones and stuff like that and I'm like, there's just 50 million different types of uh, oscilloscopes out there so I thought about the USB ones and there's, there's a couple of different USB ones and I'm not going to go into detail but I chose the Sandpart DDS-120 because of the user interface the software um, just to me looked really good I liked it uh, so really that's the reason why I bought it plus uh, you know I've got a couple of Arduinos that are from Saints Martin some other things I've never really had problems with them so uh, yeah so went on Amazon got the uh, DDS 120 uh, I already cut the tape so I had a got you on that ahead of you Yes. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, qualified certificate. Uh, yeah, that, that really instills confidence in my heart. Uh, Denton, no model. Checker, QC past 12. No date on it. Mm, really wish I'd had that. Ooh, look at it. It's kind of hefty. It's got weight to it. I like it. What does this say? Top view, USB. It says top view right here. Okay, so it actually doesn't have channel 1 channel 2 in here, but it, um, it tells you what channel is 1. So I'm assuming this is channel 1, this is channel 2, and this is the, uh, the signal generator that comes out of it. I think it's a 1 kilohertz or 1,000 megahertz. Uh, for adjusting the probes warranty sticker conveniently placed right over the screw good stuff like it I like I like the packaging though oh that's some nice thick foam it's pretty cool oh, what's in here I'm assuming there's got to be probes in here somewhere get that off the computer this oh I know what the, um CDs yeah I think these are CDs wow that's some old school vintage stuff right there I haven't even um I'll be honest with you I haven't really touched a CD in probably three years um maybe even longer than that but wow really really old school stuff interesting USB modular oscilloscope series start here. I am not starting there. That looks scary as shit. User guide. This looks like it's for the oscilloscope probes. PS2000. Oh, so these are one time and 10 time 10x probes. That's pretty cool. Voltage versus frequency curves. Blah, blah, blah. blah. And it looks like the oscilloscope breaks down cool into individual uh, pieces that's pretty cool this is where the good stuff is right here I imagine uh, just your typical USB cable don't need that yeah these definitely feel um, janky as all hell um, you know, but for 60 bucks for the entire thing, uh, what were you expecting? One times, 10 times right here. So that's, uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. P2060. 6 millihertz. Okay, so on the one time setting, it's 6 megahertz. On the 10 time setting... It's 60 megahertz. So these are 60 megahertz probes. One ohm and 10 ohm input voltage. 600 volt DC plus AC pack. Cool. Oh, and these are um, you can you can adjust the probes. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. 
But uh, yeah, um, there's not really much say to say about the probes. Um, you know, it came with it. But the, these these are 60 megahertz probes. That's pretty cool. All right, let's get to the the real stuff, the good stuff. Let's let's see it in action and uh, see if I can't fire this baby up and uh, get some waves going on and stuff. One thing to note, uh, if you're running like Windows 8 or Windows 10, you don't have to download any specific driver um, or anything like that. Uh, there's, I, I can't answer that for anything less than that. I'm pretty sure you do. But yeah, Windows 10, Windows 8, you don't have to download any driver. It's just ready, ready to go. All right, so. I've got it hooked up to the USB. And let's just grab a probe here. I think this is one, channel one. And make sure that it's on times 10, uh, just because. Which means we also have to go to uh, up here where it says channel one, DC, on. So we have our channel on. Uh, and we have to select, change this to uh, times 10. Uh, if not, if you've got this on times one, that on times 10 is gonna screw up your, uh, your thing here. Uh, we're only gonna use one channel, so make sure channel two is off. Uh, no triggers. And the user interface right here, it looks really, really good to me. It's very responsive. Um, I hope my computer's not taking a dump because I'm uh, screen capturing this at the same time and this is um, this uh, crap top is like seven years old so um, you can measure you know like a measuring date um, information you can zoom in zoom out um, move left move right you can uh, you know zoom in of you know of your X you can change the color of your screen but uh, that white background kind of hurts my eyeballs right there um, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that, but you got that thing right there. Um, save text. You can take an actual uh, picture of the screen, so that way you can save that and you can analyze and you can do all that stuff there. Um, hold on, we're gonna get to it in a minute. All right. Dang. Save, print, uh, intensity, zero. You can zero things out. Uh, and you can also do a, a recording of this here, of the um, interface, but it, it's only specific to the interface of this program, so it's not like you can go take it and um, toss it into uh, After Effects, or whatever, I don't even know, I'm still one of my words. Uh, here's your time base right here. You got your voltages on your channel ones and your channel twos, and it has the information of uh, you know, the USB oscilloscope channel one. Uh, right now it's stopped, so there's uh, nothing you can do to it. It's all off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start it. All right guys, now it's time to hook up the probes and see if we can get some uh, signals up on that screen. So we're gonna take one of our probes. We're gonna connect it obviously with the BNC connector. Um, but before I connect anything to the, uh, the ICO model 377 um, audio generator, we need to see if our probes are somewhat uh, in, spec, in spec. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the probe and we're going to attach it to this little center connector right there. Something like that. And... We're gonna make sure our setting. We're gonna make sure our settings are correct. DC uh, channel one is on. We have it selected to times ten. And start. And 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 and. Okay. All right. So we want to zoom in just a little bit. Uh, about right here. Adjust our time base. All 
There we go. Zoom in just a little bit more. I'm just trying to get it set to where I can actually see it correctly or better. There we go. So I'm no expert, um, you know. It's all a learning process. And that sucks, you can see that kind of sucks right there. So uh, 0.5 milliseconds on that, and we can see it. I wonder if I can zoom in, how come I can't zoom in? Okay, well that looks a little dodgy, so let's zoom back out. All right, good enough. So one thing that irks me is the, uh, the kit didn't come with an adjustment screw to be able to get in there and to adjust the probes. Uh, so that's kind of a little crazy, but just use a small little screwdriver and uh, try not to short anything out. And you just want to turn the screw inside here to try to get that sharp. You see, um, the, that right there is kind of like an overshoot. You don't want that, so you just want to turn that back just a little bit. Something like that. All right, that looks like just about as good as we're gonna possibly get it. And you can see it's kind of like a like a square wave going on kind of thing. Um, with these probes, I really don't think we're gonna to get too much out of it um, other than that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I mean, right here, it's supposed to be a 1,000, um, hertz it's about 0 0.995 close enough it's kind of bouncing around there but I think maybe it's just probably because uh, from the probes so let's go ahead and mess around some, with some signals oh and nothing these alligator clips here with this really thick uh, rubber housing um, or cover you might want to slide it back just a little bit because it, it's really really thick stuff uh, and it makes it really hard to push alligator clip down so we're going to attach the alligator, the ground portion, to the bottom. We're going to attach the other probe to the top. If I wasn't in the way, and let's fire this bad boy up. Don't move. All right. Um, this is tube driven, so uh, I'm just gonna give it, you know, just a couple of seconds to warm up and do its thing. And over here on the user interface, let's get channel two out of the way. Move channel one somewhere around there. And uh, one thing, when you cut the channels on and off, I wish it would get rid of, um, you know, either channel that you're not using. There you go. And you can see right here, um, you know, because we've got it set to square wave. We got it uh, for time base set. We've got 200 uh, millivolts on channel one. And you can see our max voltage is putting, uh, max voltage is 6.976. Our minimum is minus pretty much that. Uh, our frequency range is 18,200. Um, it's 18 kilohertz um, on that, which is all the way down. So if we turn this up, you can see, yep, we're in 19,000, 20,000, right about there. So it's about, it's off. So let's go down to 20,000. Yeah, so it's about a thousand hertz off is what it seems like, either um, coming from the probes or, I wouldn't say the probes, because it was pretty close when we um, uh, adjusted it. So I would say this is probably about a thousand hertz off. Let's go to 25,000. Right on the 25K mark, 
it is showing 23.645 on that. So that's uh, about 2,000 off on that. 30K, 29, 3. Yeah, so this thing seems to be about 2,000 um, hertz off. Let's go 4K, 38, 5K, 49.2, so that's only about a thousand. 60, so it seems to get better higher higher that it goes. I don't I don't know what it, what the issue is here between a sixty dollar um, oscilloscope or uh, this sixty year old audio generator. Let's go to seventy k. It's mm, off by a little more than a thousand. Eighty k. 79.8 uh, screw it let's go to 200k all the way actually it's a little past that actually uh, it's 204k which 200 and, uh, it's 204,000 hertz let's go back to exactly 200k so it's uh, 199.170k so yeah, awesome. I love it. Awesome place to start when it comes to oscilloscopes. You know, especially if you have an old desktop or if, if you have a computer in general, it doesn't matter, or, or a netbook or whatever. Anything to get the software onto it. Um, you know, for 60 bucks, you can have uh, an oscilloscope to dick around with and mess around with the electronics and just a good overall place to start learning. Um, so, yeah, if you like this video, then like it. If you just like, you know what to do. Um, like, share, subscribe. Any suggestions on videos, let me know. Uh, and if you want to see more of this, um, if you do, that's good. <laughs> I'm not asking you. I don't know why I was asking you. Um, I'm going to be doing a teardown of this. I'm going to look inside of it. I haven't looked inside of it, but I, I saw a video. I watched a video on it on YouTube. And uh, it's very interesting, especially for 60-year-old vintage uh, electronics like this. So thanks for watching.